I am going to show you pictures from my summer vacation that are examples of things we will study in this class this year. First, let's look at where I went on my first vacation of the summer. I drove from Atlanta all the way to Texas and back. I was gone for two weeks and drove over 3,500 miles. My primary destination was the Big Bend National Park in Texas. This area here of Texas is called the Big Bend because the Rio Grande River comes south and then bends back north before going south again. So this area is called the Big Bend area of Texas because of the shape of the river that flows through there. This is what that part of Texas looks like. You can tell it does not rain very much here because it looks dry and there are very little plants and no trees. This is the Rio Grande River that separates Texas from Mexico. On one side over here, we have Texas. And then over here, we have Mexico. This shape of the land is called a canyon. And a canyon is a low point or a valley with very steep sides, usually cliffs like you see here. Take a look at this picture here. And I want you to think about what would you call what you see in this picture? Well, in this part of Texas, they call that a creek. But here in Georgia, we think of creeks having water in them. But because it rains so little here, their creeks in Texas only have water in them after it rains. That's very different than here in Georgia where it rains all the time and our creeks and rivers always have water in them. If you look at this picture here, you'll see some people sitting in the water kind of over here next to the river. This is the Rio Grande River, and there's this little puddle of muddy water that people appear to be sitting in on purpose, and they are. This is called a spring, and this is where water is coming up out of the ground naturally. This particular spring is a hot spring. The water is coming up out of the ground and it is hot, like you would have in a bathtub. A little short snip. Here you can see the idea, you can view the water is bubbling up out of the ground. So this whole little tub right here of water is warm. It's like a natural bath tub. In this part of Texas, they have rocks that have very unique shapes like you see here. This does not happen like this here in Georgia. We will learn why this happens in Texas. Here is a landform. It is a shape of the land. This one is called enchanted rock. This looks very similar to Stone Mountain here in Atlanta. 
and they are actually very similar. They are these big round mountains and they are only formed one special way. And there are some of them around the country, but something happens to make the mountain that way. We are going to learn why. You also get very unique, unique shapes with rocks. This shape on the left is unique and we would not have our rocks here in Georgia shaped like that. Why not? We have the same type of rock, but it is not made to look like that. We are going to learn why. That rock is the same as Stone Mountain. Stone Mountain is white or gray color. The granite, which is the type of rock that they have in Texas, is a pink color. And you can see the red in the rock over here. They use that rock to build buildings big buildings like city buildings and they have a reddish color. Our buildings here tend to have a white color because our rock here doesn't have that red in it. This is another example of a spring, a place where water is coming up out of the ground naturally. In this place, they built a swimming pool around it. This is in the city of Austin, Texas. This is natural. The water coming into this pool is coming up from the ground. This is a cold water spring, not hot. It is actually cooler and colder than most swimming pools because the water coming out of the ground tends to be cold because it does not get warm from sunlight. Here is another picture of the state of Texas. This picture is very different than the other one that I showed you. Notice there is a lot of water here and there are lots of trees. This must be a place where it rains a lot and it does. But this is still Texas. How can one part of Texas get so much rain and the other part not? That is something we are going to learn about in this course this year. For my second trip of the summer, I flew on an airplane from Atlanta to Los Angeles in California. And then I got a car and I drove this route that you see in blue making a couple of stops and I saw and took pictures of lots of things specific for teaching this class this year. This is what Central California looks like. It's a desert where it does not rain much at all. You can see no plants, no trees, nothing green because there is not enough rain here. I visited the town of Parkfield, California, which is right on the San Andreas Fault. A fault is a term that has makes earthquakes that we will learn about in the spring. 
this town in California is right on the line where lots of earthquakes happen. They advertise this. They are proud of this. They call themselves the earthquake capital of the world because they have so many earthquakes there and the ground is always moving. These two pieces of stone look like a puzzle piece where they fit together. This setup shows how much the land has moved because of earthquakes in this town in the last hundred years. The bridge that goes across the fault where the earthquakes happens is actually bent. You can see this bridge is not perfectly straight because the land on that side of the bridge is going that way. The land over here is going this way. So the bridge bends. Because there are so many earthquakes here. This is where scientists go to measure and to study earthquakes. It is a very small town. Approximately 200 people. So less than the number of students in one grade at Centennial. But there are lots of scientists that come there to study the earthquakes because they happen all the time. Then I drove from the earthquake town called Parkfield and I drove to the coast of California and I drove this highway right along the ocean. The beach in California does not look like the beach in Florida. You can see in this picture here what beaches in California look like. They have a lot more rock and a lot less sand than what you see in California or in the Caribbean or anywhere around the Gulf of Mexico. It's actually a challenge to get to the beach sometimes. This is a nice looking little beach, but to get there, you have to climb down the cliff. They actually had a rope right here. And here you can see the lady has walked all the way down and she's trying to get down to the beach. The beaches in California are not as easy to get to as the beaches in Florida. I did see some wildlife along the beaches that we do not see on our beaches in this part of the country. These are sea lions and they come out of the water and they lay on the beach in the sun. This is the most I have ever paid for gasoline. Seven dollars and thirty nine cents because this part of California has very few towns and very few gas stations. So it makes the gas very expensive. A particular beach I was looking to go to has very unique sand. I believe this is the only place in the entire world that has purple colored sand. And you can see the purple color in the pictures. I brought back some of this sand and we are going to 
look at it and compare it to other types of sand this year. Here is a more up close picture where you can really see the purple color. Now, because they don't have beaches like we have in Florida, they have some problems with erosion. Erosion is when water takes and moves stuff away. This town right here, big fancy house, nice road. The water is taking away all of the land and eventually if it takes away too much, the land is going to collapse and move away, which is bad for the person that owns that house. Here I am playing golf. I went on this trip to play golf with my mother at this very famous golf course in California which is right on the beach. We don't have golf courses that look like this in the east where you have a cliff right beside the ocean. I am not a very good golfer and I hit my ball into the ocean many times and lost the golf ball. Here is my mother, and I want you to notice her attire, the clothes she is wearing. This is in July, the middle of summer, and look how she is dressed. Long pants and a jacket. You can tell from this picture that it's cold there, and this picture was taken in the late afternoon. Well, why is it so cold there in the middle of July? You know, here in Georgia, in the middle of July, it is very hot. But in this part of California, it's actually still quite cold. We are going to learn why. How can it be cold there in the middle of summer so cold that you need to wear a jacket i want you to think about how much a house typically costs and i am going to show you a picture of a one million dollar house in this part of california this part of california has very little usable land. So it makes every little piece of land much more expensive and makes the houses very expensive. This house in California is worth $1 million and it's not even very pretty and it it's not very big and it's not in the best neighborhood but because of the way the land is shaped houses in San Francisco California are very very expensive and we are going to look at San Francisco and look at the land and be able to explain how and why those houses can be so expensive because of what the land is like there. Just outside of San Francisco in Hayward, California, is the other end of that fault that causes a lot of earthquakes. A fault makes the ground move. And you can see all over this town where this curb and this curb used to be together 
Now this one is moving this way and this one is moving that way. You can see here it's not straight because that side is moving this way and this side is moving that way. This is a very old wall and you can see a lot more movement how it has been moved because the ground is moving on the fault. That's what causes earthquakes. You can actually see where the ground has been moving. They have a beautiful, big, nice, old building in this city. This was their city hall, the home of their government. But half of the city hall is moving one way and the other half of the building is moving the other direction. So the building is falling apart and they can't use this building anymore. It has become unsafe for people to be inside because it is going to be torn apart by the fault movement. Some other buildings have to be fixed because they have been starting to move. You have metal pieces that are added to the brick because metal can bend a little bit, whereas brick cannot. Or you see these extra nails in the brick building, and those are help to keep the brick together so that when the ground moves, the bricks don't fall down. In California, they have very serious water problems. This year, it did not snow very much. And the snow is what gives them their drinking water. The snow melts in the summertime and it fills up this lake and they drink and use water from the lake. This lake is very, very low. You can see the water would normally be up to here. You can see where the water normally comes to. It snowed so little and it very little rains in California. So with much less snow, they now have much less water. People might not have enough water to drink in California. This is a very different idea for us here in Georgia because here it rains all the time. We do not have problems with running out of water like they do in California. Here is another one of those same type of mountains that I showed you before. Looks kind of like Stone Mountain here in Georgia, but this is in Yosemite National Park. It's that same rounded shape of a mountain. But look at the rock this time. It's the same type of rock, but notice it doesn't have any red in it. And so this mountain appears to be white, whereas the other one appeared to be red. The mountains were made the same way, but they have a different color because they have different ingredients. If we look at this picture here and we ask ourselves, how much do you think it rains at this location? Well, the best thing that tells you how much it rains is how many trees do you see and how big are the trees? Well, you can see in this picture, that's a very large tree. And all in the background, 
There are trees everywhere. You can see there is a lake right there. That means it must rain a lot here to have all those trees and to have a lake. This picture here is very close to the last one. Does it rain much here? The answer is no. How do we know it doesn't rain much? Well, there are no trees. The plants are very brown. It looks like a desert. It rains very little here. The difference between those two places was only 17 minutes in the car. It was only 13 miles away. So 13 miles one direction, lots of rain, lots of trees. 13 miles in the other direction, no rain, you have a desert. If you'll notice, there was also a very big change in temperature. In 17 minutes, the temperature went from 60 degrees to 78. It went up 18 degrees. Something has to explain that. And we're going to learn why that can happen. How can you have such a big temperature change in a very short time in a small area? As I was driving then through central Nevada, the road looks like this. It is very, very empty and very, very dry. Notice there are no trees and it is not green at all, which tells you it does not rain much at all here. This particular road is called the extraterrestrial highway or more commonly for extraterrestrial we say the word aliens. This is a highway that runs very close to a military base where people think aliens are being kept by the government. So they named it the Aliens or Extraterrestrial Highway. So all along the highway, you see fun things having to do with aliens. In that area, where the secret military base is, is where the government hides all of their secret weapons. And in this town, they have the home of the stealth or secret or invisible plane. And it's so secret that they keep it here way away from anybody else so that nobody can see it and they protect their secrets. This is what I call a traffic jam in Nevada because there's almost no other cars, but I did have to be careful because sometimes the cows walk right onto the road. Now this was another example of a spring, a place where water is coming up out of the ground naturally. This one is a hot spring where the water is coming out of the ground hot. The water in this particular spring is hotter than the water you get out of your faucet at home. This water was so hot that I was not able to go into it. It was too uncomfortable. It turned my legs pink when I put them in. Now, this particular 
hot spring is not used anymore. It is abandoned. Nobody goes there. It's what we call a ghost town where nobody has lived there and everybody has moved away, but the hot spring and the building are still there. Then I drove from Las Vegas to a town called Palm Springs. There's that word again, springs. Palm Springs is another place where water comes up out of the ground naturally. And we will study about springs and their uses extensively this year. There is a very unique body of water near Palm Springs called the Salton Sea. Notice that word sea. When you read the word sea, you think of the ocean. You don't think of a lake, you think of the ocean. The difference is with the sea, you're talking about salty water, like in the ocean. This lake is a salt water lake. It is like the ocean. It is actually saltier than the water in the ocean. It is the largest lake in California. It's 15 miles across and 35 miles long. And the lake formed by accident. Over here is the Colorado River, which runs into Mexico and eventually into the Pacific Ocean. People dug a ditch from this river and said, bring me some of that water over here so that I could make farms and I could grow plants. Because remember, in Central California, it doesn't rain and you need water to grow crops. So they dug the ditch and they were bringing water to their farms. In 1905, it rained really hard and there was too much water coming through the ditch and it overflowed and broke through. And the water went to the lowest point, which is where the Salton Sea is. Within a period of a month or two, the largest lake in California was there. Well, with a large lake, people like to go boating. They like to water ski. They like to fish. People like to live on the water. So people started building towns. Bombay Beach, you had the lowest bar in the Western Hemisphere because the land is the low point where all the water flowed into. Lots and lots of resort towns. People went there to go on vacation, to swim with their children, to water ski, to fish. But something happened. Here's what's happening to the Salton Sea now. The water used to be way over here. And now you can see the water is back here. This is a sign that is meant for boats. Boats don't go on land. This was all event was previously underwater. Now the Salton Sea is going dry because remember the water got in there by accident. So no water, no more water goes into it and the water is basically evaporating and the Salton Sea is getting smaller. 
but the salt doesn't go away. So the salt in C is getting saltier every day because water evaporates, more salt stays. Now, in 2021, the salt in C is so salty that nothing can live in it. There are no more fish. There are a few minor types of shrimp and insects, but the birds that used to come and swim and eat the fish, they are gone or died because the fish have died. It is basically like a dead sea. You can swim in it, but very few people do because the water stings your eyes. It's so salty and so polluted that it's not good for you to even get in the water. So now it's a big, large wasteland. It is said to be the largest environmental disaster in California history. And there's n nothing, almost nothing, you can do to fix it. They do have some other hot springs in this part of California. And here is one. That water felt very nice. It felt like a hot tub that you would have at a hotel or maybe at your neighborhood pool. The hot water from the ground is actually useful. You can take the hot water from the ground and use it to make electricity which they do a lot in this area. This is a picture of an electrical plant, a place where they generate electricity using hot water from the ground. We cannot do this in Georgia because we do not have hot water under our ground and we will learn why. Dates. I don't know if you've ever had a date, but a date is a little fruit that you can see in the picture down here. A date is a fruit that grows on a special type of palm tree. You can see here's the groups of dates up there. Dates traditionally were never grown in the United States because you have to have the right weather to do it. Dates were grown in the Middle East where it is very hot and very dry. In World War II, Americans went to North Africa for war. And while they were there, they ate dates that were grown there. The soldiers liked them and after the war, they started looking for places to grow dates in the United States. We cannot grow dates in Georgia because a date has to have something like 80 days where the temperature gets above 90 degrees and there is no rain. Now, we have some days at 90 degrees in Georgia. We don't usually have that many. And we certainly don't have days or that many days where it doesn't rain. So they went to this part of California where they had the right weather and that's where they now grow dates. My final trip of the summer was right before we started back to school. I flew to Colorado and then drove my car to Colorado Springs. This is what Colorado Springs looks like. Lots of mountains, pretty rocks with different colors than what we have here in 
Georgia. This is a park called Garden of the Gods because it is so beautiful with the rock formations that it was given that name Garden of the Gods. Here is what's called a balanced rock. And you can see there's not very much left of the rock right here. It looks like it is propped up, but that's just the way the rock is naturally. We are going to learn about what processes and how that happens that way. I did have some fun acting like I was holding the rock up or trying to push it over, but it didn't work. And it's all a joke. While I was in Colorado Springs, I went and saw one of these tuberculosis huts. Tuberculosis is a disease that people had well over 100 years ago, but it was especially bad in the late 1800s. And you would get the bacteria in your lungs and you couldn't breathe and you would cough and you would choke. And there was no medicine to treat it. But it was thought that if you drank mineral water from the ground, from a spring, it would help. And if you stayed somewhere where the air was dry, you would not stay in Georgia if you had tuberculosis. It is too humid. So the town of Colorado Springs had the spring mineral water, which was thought to be good for you and help cure diseases. And they had dry air. So people from all over the country would come to Colorado Springs and they would live in one of these little houses. And they were isolated in there until they got better because tuberculosis is contagious. So you couldn't have everybody in one huge hospital building because they would breathe on each other. You were sent to live in one of these little huts by yourself. Here's an example of some of the ground near there. And you see the sign, it says paint mines because this is a place with such dramatic colors in the rocks that natives would come there and get those rocks to make paint. Our rocks here in Georgia do not look like that. This is Pikes Peak, the tallest mountain in that area. You can drive your car to the top of the mountain or you can take the train. This is the highest train in North America and my family and I rode it to the top of the mountain. The land is so steep that a normal train cannot go up the tracks. So they have these teeth, what's called a cog, and that's what the train can grip so that it can make it up such a high mountain. Here I am at the top, 14,000 feet above sea level at the top of the mountain. One of the touristy things that they do and what they are known for in their restaurant at the top is donuts. This is a donut that they cook up at the top. And because there is so much less air at the top of the mountain, so much less air pressure, it is said that the donuts get lighter and fluffier because they are cooked at the top 
of the mountain instead of at the bottom. So that's something that the tourists do. You go to the top of the mountain and eat their special donuts that come out that way because of the shape of the land. The little town next to Pikes Peak is called Manitou Springs. There's that word again. We will learn a lot about springs this year. Spring is where water comes up out of the ground naturally. And in the town of Manitou Springs, you can drink water for free straight out of the ground. It's clean water. It's safe to drink. So their water fountains are basically pipes that go straight underground and allow the water to come up. All over town, there are about seven or eight springs where you can go and drink the water. A hundred or 150 years ago, this is how people got their drinking water. They would take a container to this spring, fill up the water and take it home with them. You can still do that. People take a cup and go to the different springs around town and taste the water. And each water has a slightly different taste because it's coming out of a slightly different place in the ground. They show you the amount of minerals that are in each spring. Different springs have different minerals, so they have different tastes. So someone might like the taste of the Wheeler spring water because it has these minerals in it. Somebody else might like the Shoshone spring because it has a different mix or different amount of minerals in it. I brought back some of this water from the trip and we are going to analyze it in the winter time when we study springs. I do have some what I call goofy non-earth systems pictures. My son and I went to a video arcade or a fun house there in Manitou Springs where they have antique video games. And the reason why they have them there is the air is so dry that the machines are able to still work and they last. They don't deteriorate because of the water in the air. This game that my son is playing here is approximately 70 years old, maybe. I'm not sure exactly what year, but notice it's got a wooden shooting gun. That wood in some place like Georgia would have rotted because of the water in the air. The same thing with the metal pieces. They would deteriorate if there were a lot of water in the air. So the climate at this location is just right for things like this to last a long time. I did stop by the world famous Clown Motel, which is a motel that is done up with every room in clown pictures and figurines and everything clowns. This right here is one of the pictures of the office. I have never seen so many clowns in one place in all my life. And some people are terrified of clowns. This would not be a hotel that they would like to sleep at. My son went to the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum, or sorry, World Records Museum. 
and he stood beside a model of the world's tallest man. That model is accurate. That's how tall the tallest man ever in the world was. He was eight feet, 11 inches tall. And you can see how my 16 year old son compares in size to the world's tallest man. It was fun. James Dean was a very famous Hollywood actor. Maybe you recognize the picture, maybe not. But there's a place in California where he died because he crashed his car into a tree. And the tree is still there and there's actually a memorial to him at the tree. This is a very weird and unique attraction. This is in the middle of the desert, just south of Las Vegas, Nevada, where somebody painted a bunch of rocks and stacked them on top of each other. It's very simple. It's in the middle of nowhere in the desert, and now it is one of the most popular tourist destinations in Las Vegas. Just outside of Palm Springs, beside the main highway that used to go to Los Angeles, people would build things that would get somebody's attention to make them want to stop and eat at your restaurant or buy your gas or stay the night in your hotel. This particular area has a huge collection of dinosaurs, which they painted very bright colors to catch your attention so that you would stop there.